sorry, let me try that again, this time with the microphone on. Uh, I'm a little bit out of practice. It's uh, so good to be back with everybody. I've been really missing these online sessions, but unfortunately, uh, it's uh, not a very easy subject that we're going to be dealing with tonight. And uh, yeah, I think we're a bit of a lag, uh, home network. Uh, got some family members watching tonight. So that might be causing a bit of a lag in the um, in the internet. All right. Well, you've you've seen the title of tonight's message, uh, and uh, kind of retitled it. You know, what is it? What is happening in Israel now, and why? And I want to approach this from a purely biblical perspective. I know that there are numerous ministers who have incredible insights as to what is happening in Israel in terms of, you know, in, uh, in current events in Israel from a political, from a social uh, aspect. But I don't profess to be a political analyst or, or a great historian. So I want to address what's happening in Israel purely from a biblical perspective, and that makes it incredibly difficult. You know, I was, I was asked earlier this week if I would if I would present something, if I just uh, give some insight from a biblical perspective about events that are happening in Israel right now. And as I thought about it, I realized just how incredibly difficult it's going to be because so many Christians are so emotionally um, invested into the, the nation of Israel and the Jewish people that oftentimes and unfortunately very often we're blinded to the, the reality of Israel's position before God. Now we know that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places and what we see in the natural is an overflow of what is taking place in the spiritual and saints this is so very important i'm going to reiterate it what we're seeing in the natural is an overflow of what is happening in the spiritual nothing happens in the natural unless it first takes place in the spiritual so as i share tonight i ask of everybody let scripture be our compass let scripture be our plumb line and let scripture be our highest authority so as a jew i feel incredibly connected to to israel and to the events there and having seen the slaughter and the barbaric cruelty of what these hamas terrorists did to my countrymen obviously grieves me and i'm cut to the heart about it especially as, as as a jew having you know knowing about the history of persecution and anti-semitism we have faced for two thousand years ever since the second temple was destroyed and the diaspora took place we've been hunted down hated persecuted for centuries and so in the Jewish collective, we're all affected by it. But I want us to put emotion aside and navigate what is happening in the Middle East right now through a purely biblical lens. All right, so here goes. I ask that we, again, do not allow our emotions to overwhelm our sense of, well, I should say not our sense, but overwhelm our commitment to place scripture at the forefront of any discussion and argument so i want to start off by saying what we're seeing in israel is nothing new in fact what we're seeing this persecution has just taken uh, a form a different form this is a hamas attacking israel instead of the plo or fatah or hezbollah or, or or the nazis or the russians or whoever has persecuted us through the centuries. This is just a consequence of a spiritual problem that's going to keep reoccurring. So I want to address this in terms of biblical pattern. What we're seeing is 
just another cycle of biblical pattern because of a root that has not ever been dealt with uh, by the nation of Israel as a whole. So I'm going to start off in Jeremiah chapter 6, and I'm going to read from verses 16 through 23. Thus says the Lord, Stand in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where the good way is now this is the lord speaking through his prophet jeremiah to the nation of judah who have been warned by god that unless they repent they're going to come under judgment through god sending the babylonians to destroy the city to kill many many of the jewish people and to ultimately take them captive and so God, through the prophet, is crying out that the nation will repent. So he says, I, I read verse 16 of Jeremiah 6 again. Stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths where the good way is and walk in it. Then you will find rest for your soul. So God calling Israel to go back to the old paths, the paths of obedience to the Mosaic covenant and obedience to his prophets. But they said... We will not walk in it. So God's cry to his people to go back to the old ways and their response at the end of verse 16, but they said, we will not walk in it. We will refuse to go back under the law of Moses. Verse 17, also I said, watchmen over you saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen. Therefore hear you nations and know O congregation what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will certainly bring calamity on this people. And so God has then says in response to Judah, saying, we will not go back to the old ways. We will not listen to the watchman. Uh, and so God says, I will certainly then bring calamity on this people. The fruit of their thoughts, because they have not heeded my words, nor my law, but rejected it. For what purpose to me comes frankincense from Sheba, and sweet cane from a far country. Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, nor your sweet, nor your sacrifices sweet to me. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people, and the fathers and the sons together shall fall on them. The neighbor and his friend shall perish. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a people comes from the north country. And now he's speaking about the Babylonians coming from the north country. A great nation will be raised from the farthest parts of the earth, they will lay hold on bow and spear. Now notice the next words, or the next line. They are a cruel. They are cruel, and have no mercy. God said to His chosen people that because they refuse to go back to the ancient paths, the old paths of obedience to the Lord, that He's going to send a people from the north country, a cruel people, a people without mercy. And we will look what happened. Last Saturday, where these terrorists, without mercy, without compassion, behaved like absolute animals, tortured and murdered Jewish people. But what is the root of this? Because I want to look at this, as I said, I'm going to reiterate over and over again from a biblical perspective. Why did God permit this? So we see that in Jeremiah chapter 6, God be but God said to Israel, because you refused to come back to me, I will bring a, a cruel and merciless people against you. And again in Jeremiah chapter 30, and I want to read this portion of scripture because it is so uh, significant and, 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 and so, um, uh, what is it, the, um, it's so relevant for current events. Jeremiah chapter 30, and I'm going to read the first 16 verses. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, saying, Write in a book for yourself all the words that I've spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I'll bring back the, capti the captivity of my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave to their fathers, and they shall possess it. Now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus says the Lord, We have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. 
and ask now and see whether man is ever in labour with child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins, like a woman in labour, and all faces turn pale? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it, and it is a time of Jacob's trouble, but he should be saved out of it. Saints, this is what we are seeing. We are seeing God having brought back his people into the land, but this, it's not for a time of peace. There is turmoil and there is trouble. And ultimately, it's going to bring about a period in Israel's history, a final period called a Jacob's Trouble, where there will be persecutions against the Jewish people and especially those in the, in the, in the nation of Israel that are unparalleled in all of Jewish history. And this is so important, saints, what we're seeing happening right now in Israel we're starting to see Jeremiah chapter 30 being fulfilled, God calling them back to the land for a time called Jacob's trouble, a time of incredible hardship and persecution. Verse 8, For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck and will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no, shall no, no more enslave them, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So in a future time, after Jacob's trouble, God is going to break the, the yoke of bondage over the people of Israel and they will finally be a free people. But saints, that's only going to take place in the millennium. So the events before the millennium or the major event is Israel coming back into the land and then Jacob's trouble, a time of great persecution, which we're going to look at in a few moments Verses 10 through 11, Therefore do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, nor be dismayed, O Israel, for behold, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest, and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. Now again, saints, this is future tense, because Israel has not lived in peace from the moment that they, they were gathered back in the land. They have not lived in peace. They have been in a continual state of war and conflict with their neighbors so this is not speaking about something that we can hope for before the coming of the lord jesus verse 11 god's encouraging the jewish people for a future time for i am with you says the lord to save you though i make a full end of all nations where i've scattered you yet i will not make a complete end of you notice those words god says i'll make a complete end of all the nations but i won't make a complete end of all of you he's not saying i will spare all of you he's saying i will not make a complete end of all of you and so why is god allowing israel to suffer these incredible hardships remember god made a covenant in the old covenant in deuteronomy chapter 28 god speaks of all the blessings that will come upon the nation of israel if they diligently obey his voice and keep his commandments and statutes he said that he would protect them from the enemies though the enemies uh, come against them they'll be scattered seven ways and god has always promised protection and provision for his chosen people providing that they walk in obedience to them and god said so let's take up again from the second part of verse 11 so god says of israel yet i'll not make a complete end of you which implies that there will be those that will be will suffer but there will be a remnant but i will correct you in justice god says and will not let you go altogether unpunished so god is has promised to bring a future punishment on the nation of israel now he, remember jeremiah was written just before and during the fall of jerusalem in AD 583 so this is speaking about a time almost two and a half thousand years into the future a time that, that you and I are living in now, where God says that He's going to, uh, there's going to come a time of Jacob's trouble, that that uh, God is going to punish Israel for their disobedience. He goes on to say in verse 12, For thus says the Lord, your affliction is incurable. Your wound is severe. God's speaking of Israel. Your affliction, that which afflicts you, is incurable. He's saying that Jewish people cannot be cured of what afflicts them. Your wound is severe. There is no one to plead your cause that you may be bound up. You have no healing medicines. All your lovers have forsaken you or forgotten you. Those are all your foreign gods and all the people that you joined yourself to. 
that you may worship their gods. They've all forsaken you or forgotten you. They do not seek you. And God says to his chosen people, For I've wounded you with the wound of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one. And this is so hard to read, and so especially in light of what we're seeing on our television screens. God says that he will wound his own people with the wounds of an enemy, with the chastisement of a cruel one, for the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. Why do you cry out about your affliction? Your sorrow is incurable because of the multitude of your iniquities, because your sins have increased. I have done these things to you. Verse 15, because the end, you have sinned, because your sins have increased, I've done these things to you. And saints, it is so difficult for me to say this. But what is happening in Israel is being allowed by God because collectively as a nation, the Jewish people have not just forsaken Messiah Jesus, their Messiah, but they've forsaken the Mosaic law, the very thing. That causes them to reject Jesus. That is the law that they want to hold fast to. They've even rejected the law. So they have, they have broken both old and new covenant. Because of the sin and, and, and the iniquity. And what God said in Jeremiah chapter 30. And what God has spoken to, to Israel. From the mouth of Moses. Way back in the book of Deuteronomy. Through the prophets. That if the nation of Israel do not serve him. That in the latter times a Great calamity will come upon his people. And this is how you and I, as born-again, blood-washed, Bible-believing Christians, need to view what's happening. And I'm not saying that we are not affected by the cruelty and the injustices. But what is happening, as I've said it when we start, what is happening in the natural is an overflow of what has taken place in the spiritual. And the hardest thing for us to get our minds right around saints is that it's going to get worse i think at, at right now well i haven't i haven't uh, watched i don't have watched uh, the news today but uh, there were 1300 jewish people that have been slain so far it's a terrible it's a, such a huge number but you know the book of zechariah in chapter 13 tells us that in the time of jacob's trouble in the time that jesus said will be tribulation such as has never been seen before. We know from Scripture, especially those of us who have studied eschatology, in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8 and 9, the Bible says that two-thirds in the land will be cut off and die. So we're looking at uh, the, you know, just the impact that 1,300 Jewish souls have... have, uh, have, have um, just that impact that, 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 that uh, has caused so much grief and, and anger and rage. But the Bible tells us that under the Antichrist, two-thirds of all the Jews will be killed. We're not talking about thousands now. We're talking about millions, millions of people. And we know th the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, from reading from verse 15 all the way through to uh, uh, 22, that there's going to be such tribulation that coming on the nation of Israel. But why? It's because of their disobedience to God. And I just want to share just one or two very distressing things. You know, hmm. 260 young people were slaughtered at this Nova concert um, just outside of what Sadot in, um, in Israel. But... Have you has has did anyone notice when they were showing you a video clips of the uh, festival? Did anybody notice this statue that the Jewish people were dancing around? And that is a statue, if you look carefully, of the Buddha. The festival, the Nova Festival, is a New Age festival where that where. Through the music and through 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 taking of, of drugs and smoking things they shouldn't smoke, these young people go into this 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 uh, this trance-like state to help them to meditate and to connect with their spiritual guides. And you know, God said to Israel way back in Isaiah chapter two verse six, God rebuking His people, He says that you that God has forsaken them. 
because they are filled with eastern ways and they are soothsayers like the Philistines. And, you know, that, that is such a... When I saw that, when I saw that, 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 that Buddha and those, those, those tents, those colorful tents, those psychedelic colors which were to help these young people go into a trance-like state to get into the spirit realm... You know, I couldn't help, you know, it was something raised, raised up within me, is that, yes, these, were these kids, were these young people innocent? To us, yes. But saying it's not to God. Not to God, and we, that's why we have to see this through a biblical lens. It doesn't mean they were any more wicked than anyone else. But because of Israel's sin, because as a nation we have forsaken our God and we have forsaken our Messiah, God is, is bringing judgment upon us, upon his people. But then early this year, in June, in June this year, in Tel Aviv, from the 8th to the 9th of June, was Gay Pride Month in Israel. Look at that crowd. There's tens of thousands of Jewish people, homosexual, parading unashamedly through the streets of Tel Aviv, mocking the God who rained fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah because of the very same sin. And we wonder why these things are happening. Or if you go through the markets... In uh, in Israel, I don't know. Those of you who've been to to, to Israel and, and you've seen the, what what uh, the hand is called the Hamsa, right? And sometimes it has a star of David in, uh, sometimes in an eye in it. And you see it all over. You know, all all over in, in in the shops in Israel. And here's a video from a a a Jewish website explaining what the Hamsa is. My Jewish learning. You want to learn more about witchcraft? My Jewish learning. And saints, this is why Israel and the Jewish people have been persecuted and are facing these terrors all the time. It's because a loving God keeps reaching out to us as a nation. And as a nation, we keep rebelling against him. And so this is just some of the insights of what's happening in Israel. And it gets far worse. Uh, in Matthew 24, what we see now, saints, Jesus calls this the beginning of sorrows. And as hard as it is for you and I to grasp, comprehend, and accept, what we see now is only going to get exponentially worse. And I want to remind us of the words of the Lord Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. And he said to his disciples, and I'm reading from verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Saints, do not get deceived. What is happening to Israel is a tragedy. It is wicked. It is cruel. But it has been permitted by the Lord as a punishment to his people in the hope that they will turn back to him. Don't let anyone deceive you. Otherwise, the Palestinians are no more evil than God's own people. For in God's economy, the greatest sin is not the murder of babies, but the greatest sin is turning your back on the Lord God. You know, 
God says this in Amos chapter 3, verse 2 of Israel. Amos 3, verse 2. God says, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. What advantage then has the Jew? Much in every respect. For to them were committed the oracles of God. We have been given God's word. And God expects the Jewish people of all nations to obey him. And so for the Jew, the greatest sin is forsaking the Lord their God. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Verse 5. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. What we're seeing now, saints, is the beginning. That's going to lead us up to the 70th week of Daniel. You know, just this month, just in the month of October, we've had the ongoing war in Ukraine. We've had conflicts in, in Serbia. Do you know that uh, last week, 2,400, more than 2,400 Afghans were killed in a major earthquake? Hurricane Lydia struck Mexico. In Somalia, 107,000 people have been affected by flood. There's been severe droughts in Bolivia. There's been chaos all over the world. So what we're seeing is the fulfillment of Matthew chapter 24. So my exhortation, as we look at what's happening in Israel through a biblical lens, is let us remind ourselves of God's prophetic timeline. What we're seeing, Israel return to the land, but coming under judgment and persecution, which will lead to Jacob's trouble, which will then lead to God judging the nations, as is his custom. He brings nations against his people, then he judges those nations for the way they treat his people, and then ultimately God will bring the remnants into the millennium. And it's speaking about those Jews who do not yield themselves to the Lord. Now, in this environment that we're in, people are looking for the Antichrist. And we know that Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, prophesies that when the 70th week of Daniel resumes, it will resume when the prince who's to come, speaking of the Antichrist, will confirm a covenant with many for one week. And already, and I'm sure you've picked it up on the news, we're hearing calls for the confirming of the Oslo Accords and the Abrahamic Accords. Have you, know, have you heard that on the news where politicians say we need to go back to the Oslo Accords, we need to go back to the Abrahamic Accords? And 2,500 years ago, Daniel heard from Gabriel the angel that in the end times, one will arise to confirm a treaty, a treaty already existing, and we're hearing the calls. Now, am I saying the Antichrist is coming? Well, we know he is, but I don't know. I'm not saying when, but we start to pick up the spirit of this age, the call to, for, for the nations involved, the Palestinians and the Jews and the Arab nations around Israel to confirm and to ratify both the Oslo and Abrahamic Accords. And Paul says this to, to the Thessalonians who were confused by things that they had heard, perhaps things that they were seeing, and they had been told that the day of the Lord had already come, the day of Christ. The day of Christ and the day of the Lord is one and the same thing. There's a time that just before God will take out his church and then he will pour out his wrath. And so Paul says this. He says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or trouble, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ has come. Saints, as difficult it is to, for us to witness these horrific uh, pictures and images of, of barbarism, and if you do not have compassion on the Palestinian people, then you go check your own heart. Because you know, there are many, many Palestinians who do not support Hamas. There are born-again believers amongst the Palestinians uh, who are brothers and sisters in Christ and are subject to incredible hardship 
and they are innocent. So we as born again believers need to take a biblical stand and we need to look at everything from a biblical perspective. Yes, what Hamas has done is wrong. The hatred in their hearts is inspired by the demonic religion and they are motivated by demonic spirits. There are innocent people on both sides. But all this is happening is because the hearts of men have forsaken God. And so Paul then goes on to say to the Thessalonians, he says in verse 5 of chapter 2, Do you not remember... Okay, uh, hope that hope that's come through. Um, all right, it looks like we right we're back live again. So just just to recap, um, you know, as born again believers, our we have been given this unbelievable privilege to have an insight into these future events, and we need to take this 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 privilege very seriously. And become intercessors and begin to pray that God will open up the eyes and the hearts of all involved in these conflicts. That they may come to salvation and be spared from the wrath of God. So saints, um, very different from a whole lot of um, ministers who have insight into what's happening on the ground and the political um, goings on behind uh, this, this current conflict in the Middle East. But I've come uh, just uh, from a biblical perspective and to sum it up, what is happening to Israel is as a result of the disobedience. This is only going to intensify. It's going to lead up to Jacob's trouble, which is the time that Jesus said will be a time of tribulation and persecution that is unparalleled in human history. Zechariah chapter 13 uh, tells us that two-thirds of the Jews in the land will be killed. And so... Let us as believers not allow emotions to cause us to sin, be angry and do not sin. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I can see the, the internet is absolutely shocking. So I'm going to sort of bring it to, bring it to an end now. But I, I hope that has been helpful to you and giving you a clearer perspective of what is happening in the Middle East. I'm going to yeah, I don't think uh, I can answer too many questions. The internet is, is really bad. But I want to tell you, it has been absolutely wonderful just being with, with you folk again and just seeing your names popping up in the comments. Uh, yeah, perhaps we need to start doing these uh, onlines again. Uh, didn't realize how much I missed you. And, uh, well, if it's been a blessing, yeah, let me know. But I uh, hope it's, 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 been, it's been really helpful. So... Um, yeah, until we meet again next time, may God richly, richly bless you. And let's keep praying for all parties in, involved. All right, until next time, may, may God bless you.